Today we are going to talk about composition of functions, which is plugging one function into the other. You've done it before, but we'll get back to this in a second. I want you to remember that the domain of a composition function, f of g, is defined to consist of all x in the domain of g, for which g of x is in the domain of f. So, in other words, you must consider the domain of the internal function as well as the resulting domain. And I'm going to move quick. Feel free to pause, rewind, whatever you need to do. First of all, f of x, f plus g of x is equal to f of x plus g of x. So in this case, it's radical x plus radical 4 minus x. That's our function. We need to find its domain. Our domain rules tell us anything under a radical has to be greater than or equal to zero. So x has to be greater, greater than or equal to zero. And x has to be less than or equal to four, which means our domain will go from zero to four. f times g of x is the same thing as f of x times g of x. So we get radical x times radical four minus x as our function, or radical 4x minus x squared. For domain, we have to set what's under that radical, greater than or equal to zero. When we're solving a quadratic inequality, meaning degree two or higher, we must make an underline. So, this equals zero at zero and at four. We need to test some values between there. If we plug in a negative 1, we get a negative times a positive, which is a negative. If we plug in a 2, we get a negative times, a positive times a positive, sorry, which is a positive. And if we plug in a 5, we get a positive times a negative, which is a negative, which means it is positive from 0 to 4. And it's a greater than or equal to sign, so that 0 and that 4 are included. Last one, f divided by g of x is the same as f of x divided by g of x. So we get radical x over radical 4 minus x. The top tells us that x has to be greater than or equal to 0. The bottom or the denominator tells us that 4 minus x in the radical would have to be greater than or equal to 0. But because it is in the denominator, it cannot be equal. So it's just greater than 0. So 4 has to be greater than x, and we add x to both sides. So if x is greater than or equal to 0, but x is smaller than 4, we know it goes from 0 to 4. 0 is included because of the equal to, 4 is not. Now, when we're graphing a positive, what you're pretty much doing is adding their y value. So if you notice, f at this point right here has a y value of about this long. If I add that length to my g, that at the top of it is going to be where my new point is for f plus g. Let's do that a couple places. So like right here, we get a y value of about this much. We add that directly above it to the g, and we get another point right here. Here's another one at this point. Our y value is about that big. Add that length straight above it. Right here, kind of short. At that point, that's our y. So straight above it, we're going to add that little amount. And down here, our y value is 0. So we're going to add 0 to this red line and give us another point. So we have all of these points, which when we sketch the curve that connects them all, that green line is, I'll draw it again in black. Scratch that. This black line is our sum of those two. So you're really just adding y values. Now, f of g of x. This means we need to find f of g of x, or f of 2x squared plus 1, which if we plug 2x squared plus 1 in for x, we're going to plug it into 
you get 1 over 2x squared plus 1. Now, anytime we find the domain, we have to not only consider the domain of our answer, but also the domain of our inner function. So up here, this domain is x is everything except 0. This domain is all real numbers. So, to find the domain of this, we need to find out where 2x squared plus 1 is not allowed to equal 0. 2x squared is not allowed to equal negative 1. x squared can't equal negative 1 half. Well, if we square root both sides, we get an imaginary number. So, the domain of our answer is all real numbers. Check it with the domain of the inner function. The domain of our inner function is all real numbers, which means our domain is all real numbers. G of G. Similar situation. We need G of G of X, which is G of 2X squared plus 1. We plug 2X squared plus 1 into G. We're going to get 2 times 2X squared plus 1 squared plus 1. G has been plugged into itself. Domain-wise, the domain of that function, it's a polynomial, so it's going to be negative infinity to infinity. And the domain of the inner function, G, is that exact same domain. So our overall domain is negative infinity to infinity. Example two. Before we start, let's get these domains. So this domain, x is greater than or equal to zero. This one, 2 minus x has to be greater than or equal. I wrote that equal too far twice. Greater than or equal to zero. So 2 has to be greater than or equal to x on g. And for f, x is greater than or equal to zero. So f of g of x will give us f of radical 2 minus x. When we plug that into f, it's going to be radical, radical 2 minus x. Now we find domain, anything under a radical is greater than or equal to zero. So our radical 2 minus x has to be greater than or equal to zero. Square both sides. And 2 has to be, oh, add x to both sides, and 2 is greater than or equal to x. Or x is less than it or equal to 2. Now, we have to compare that with our domain of our inner function, which is the exact same thing. So our domain here is going to be anything less than or equal to zero or negative infinity to two. Now on G of G, we are finding, plugging G into G. We're taking G of radical two minus x, which gives us radical two minus radical two minus x. Using this, we can find our domain. Anything under the radical has to be greater than or equal to zero. I'm going to add my radical to both sides. I'm going to square both sides at this point, so I just square them both. I'm going to solve for x, and I'm going to find out that x is greater than or equal to negative 2. Now we need to be careful because we have to check our inner function. If you remember back here at the top, we found out the domain of g was x is less than or equal to 2. Another way to write this. But our outer function, or our final answer, was x is greater than or equal to negative 2. Where does x is greater than or equal to negative 2 and x is less than or equal to 2 overlap? And that is from negative 2. To two. And if you need to sketch them both on the same number line to see where it should be double shaded, you can. And that's it for today. If you have questions about compositions of functions, come see me tomorrow or make sure that you ask in class.